Good evening. I'm David Cataforis, Professor and Chair of Art History at the University of Kansas. I'm speaking to you from Lawrence, Kansas, and I would like to acknowledge that the University of Kansas resides on the ancestral territory of the Kaw people, who were forced off their land by the United States in the 19th century and largely relocated to Oklahoma. This acknowledgement recognizes Native Americans as traditional guardians of the land and the enduring relationship between Native peoples and these traditional territories. I'm pleased to welcome you to another lecture in our ongoing series, Intersections of Identity, Expression, Exchange, and Hybridity. The series asks, what constitutes identity? How do people navigate, form, and reform their sense of self? And how can the study of art and its history help us to consider the diverse identities expressed by visual culture and its creators? We seek to amplify the voices of scholars and artists whose work explores individual and collective identities as those intersect with notions of the body, disability, gender, heritage, and race. The series is organized by KU's Crest Foundation Department of Art History and the Graduate Students of the History of Art, Diversity, Equity, Accessibility, and Inclusion Committee. It is sponsored by the Franklin Murphy Lecture Fund. We present it in partnership with the Spencer Museum of Art and KU Department of Visual Art. The graduate students and I are grateful to Art History Department Administrative Associate Joanna Ritt for all of her organizational help. And we acknowledge KU student Marlene Seron for the poster design. It's my honor to introduce this evening's speaker, Hong Zhang. Hong is my friend, so I'll refer to her by her first name in this introduction. Born in China during the Cultural Revolution and raised among artists, Hong received her BFA from the prestigious Central Academy of Fine Arts in Beijing before moving to the United States in 1996. She's been living and working in Lawrence, Kansas as a full-time artist since 2004, after graduating from the MFA program at the University of California, Davis. She's represented by Haw Contemporary and in 2021 was awarded a large studio at Studios Inc. in Kansas City. Hong's art involves both a focus on personal identity and gender and her cross-cultural life experiences in the American Midwest. She combines traditional skills with contemporary ideas. Her work is richly layered, featuring both fine details and monumental scale, weaving together the history of Chinese ink painting and new modes of expression that she first encountered in the US. Hong's trademark works, which she developed during graduate school in the US, are large black and white charcoal drawings of long hair, which she has used to explore her identity as a Chinese immigrant, woman, and mother. Hong has shown her work extensively, both in the US and internationally. She was included in a Smithsonian Institution National Portrait Gallery exhibition, which toured nationally. She has exhibited at the Contemporary Museum of Art in Norway in Oslo, China National Art Museum in Beijing, Milan Royal Palace in Italy, and most recently, the Nelson Atkins Museum of Art and the Nerman Museum of Contemporary Art in Kansas City. Her work is also in public collections, including KU Spencer Museum of Art and the Harvard Art Museums, as well as in private collections of contemporary art, such as the DSL Collection in Paris, France, and the White Rabbit Gallery in Sydney, Australia. Her many awards include the Daedalus Foundation MFA Fellowship, the Pollock Krasner Foundation Grant, and the Skowhegan School of Painting and Sculpture Artist Residency Full Scholarship. She was recently honored to receive a commission for two large drawings now installed in the new Kansas City International Airport Terminal, which opens to the public next month. Hong's lecture this evening will be followed by a question and answer moderated by, moderated by DEAI committee member, Nidita Reina. Please type your questions for Hong into the chat in YouTube either during or immediately following her talk. I'm now happy to turn the screen over to her for her lecture, Duality and Identity, a Chinese Artist in the American Midwest. I just share my screen. Thank you for the invitation and uh, joining me tonight uh, for my talk in such cold weather, but I'm pleased my talk uh, is on Zoom, not <laughs> in person. So um, 
let me uh, share my screen and talk about uh, through slides. Can you see, is it, um, let me see. Yeah, we can see your screen. Are you gonna yeah. use the, the slideshow? Got it, the bottom. There you can go. Can you see now full screen? Yes. Okay. Um, let me introduce myself a little bit. Uh, this is where I was born, uh, called Shenyang, northeast of China. It's like a, a Detroit uh, in the American version. So you see that this is a map of China, looks like uh, the shape of a chicken. My hometown is the chicken head. I was born during the Cultural Revolution to a family of artists. These are all the pictures of um, my family. Uh, I have identical twin sister and the older sister who enjoyed eight years of a single child. And then my parents really wanted to have another boy, but it turned out twin sisters was born um, the first day of Chinese New Year during the spring festival. That's why my parents gave me a, a name First name Hong in Chinese means uh, red, color red. And the middle names Chun means spring. So my Hong is a typical um, name for girl during the Cultural Revolution. And Chun, the middle name is, uh, came from uh, the time when I was born during the spring festival. These are the examples of my family's work. Uh, my parents, uh, both my my dad taught at the central, uh, no, at the Lu Xun Academy of Fine Arts in traditional Chinese fine style ink painting. And my mother does uh, bird and landscape mainly. And my older sister studied oil painting and my twin sister uh, studied um, making. At the age of 15, uh, me and my twin sister left hometown, uh, passed the national exam, got uh, uh, attended to the Central Academy of Fine Arts in Beijing, attached high school. So I spent four years concentrating in foundational courses, um, in a class from drawing, painting, and Eastern and Western art histories. Then I spent another four years studying at the academy for a Chinese ink painting meeting. These are the example of my undergraduate study at the TAFA, a short term Central Academy of Fine Arts. So my area is really interested in figurative Chinese fine style ink painting. So you can see my early influence uh, really came from my uh, parents, my family. Um, but also uh, has to do with my training, early uh, age of professional training at attached high school and academy back in, in China. And as an undergraduate student, uh, we also had to learn from the master's uh, piece just to uh, understand how the medium and the uh, ink painting uh, technique uh, works. So these are the example of the one on the left is study from Song Dynasty's silk painting. And the one on the right is my undergraduate BFA uh, show using the same technique and same medium ink on silk, but with more contemporary my own theme of work. 
Here I want to tell you the difference between freestyle and fine style. The one on the left is called freestyle. You do something that uh, spontaneous and uh, very fast. And uh, the one on the right, which I studied called fine style ink painting requires a lot of details and time consuming process. But each styles um, requires long time training and understanding of the medium. One just done it faster, the other is slower. Here's an example of how the fine style ink painting works. You have to, you know, because working with ink uh, on rice paper is unforgiving. In other words, you cannot make any mistake. Um, that's why it requires a detailed pencil sketch first. Then you transfer the pencil sketch onto a rice paper. Since the rice paper is translucent, you can either use the light table or usually I just use the window during the daylight to trace um, the, the, the drawing uh, using a tiny brush with ink. Then I applied a different layer of line drawing with ink. Uh, once I got everything right, then I applied uh, the color, start out with uh, the ink as a foundation through many layers from darker, uh, from lighter to dark until I got the right tone. Then I apply the color later. Usually, if you want to get the um, blue, if you want to get a green, you first grounded the blue first, and then the last layer of work, you apply yellow. So that's why you can keep the translucency, transparency of the water-based uh, uh, color. Here, uh, here are the example of the, the fine style ink painting uh, process work. Sometimes I switch, you know, hold two brushes, one for the uh, ink, the other to uh, have water. So before everything dry, you switch to two uh, brushes at the same time, and then you can blend in the, the ink so you can have uh, this uh, uh, transitional tone from darker to lighter. So after I finished my undergraduate study and um, four years of uh, high school, altogether eight years of training in China, uh, even though I uh, developed a strong foundation, solid foundation, uh, but still the content of art was restricted during that time, you know, during the late eighties and early nineties. Uh, that's why me and my twin sister came to America in 1996, uh, sponsored by um, our older sister who came here in early 80s, uh, made a home in America. She helped me and my twin sister came here to further study uh, in studio art. Here I want to show you the first series of work I did when I came to America. Of the three generation series. So this body of work, I still used traditional Chinese fine style ink medium on smaller scale. And uh, the concept has to do with, you know, my grandmother, my mother, and myself of Chinese women, our physical and uh, psychological changes through different period of time. I have used um, birdcage and um, shoes were by different generation of Chinese women to show our joy and suffer through different period of historical time. You know, the background image also show uh, each generation was the political and social leaders or influence has an impact on their life. So it's very narrative um, because the reason I wanted to do this, these type of subjects were not allowed 
in China considered un uh, correct, politically correct subjects. So when I was there, I, well, I was not allowed to do this. Once I landed in America, the immediate freedom allowed me to uh, create something like this and also give me an opportunity of freedom, freedom to explore this area. And the first two years, my English was not so good. So I constantly miss home um, back in China. So I still have this direct connection with my family and miss my grandmother, my mother a lot. That's why this uh, first series of work uh, came from. Here's an example of called my parents. Uh, this is a typical shoes worn by women and men during that time, during the Cultural Revolution. You see Chairman Mao's imagery in the background. So it emphasizes uh, how his ide ideology uh, had an impact on my parents' generation of Chinese people. So there's a layering information, but also I was inspired by, um, you know, Western surrealism. So there's definitely this type of element uh, in this series of work. And the, the longer I stayed in the US, the more I see the difference between the two cultures. So this body of work, the next series called Two Cultures, I started uh, switching to oil painting medium. And these are the example of, you know, the immediate difference between the two cultures. The one on the left to show uh, everyday used um, silverware and the one on the right to show, you know, the color significance in two different cultures. Like the white color, usually uh, you see the bright wear white color, but in China, white color considered as a, a mourning or people dead, uh, you go to the funeral, you wear white color. But in Chinese culture, the red color always represents the happiness and good luck. So you'll see the comparison between the wedding dress come from two different cultures, East and West. Then these are uh, um, diptych work, still oil on a smaller medium uh, size. I see them as a, like a, a portraits. Uh, when you go to Chinese uh, banquet, usually they serve the whole fish and the fish head considered as the best part, delicious part of the fish. US or the Western culture, we prefer to eat a clean and boneless uh, fish stick, uh, steak instead of whole fish. And there's another example of party training I call the culture training. It you know, represents Body training from two different cultures. The one on the right, that's uh, uh, still happening in China. You probably don't see them in bigger city, but the middle-sized city still in the winter time, you see baby bundled up, but still has an open bottom. Uh, Chinese baby usually started potty training very early, even before one year old, uh, before they started walking. But Western Babies turn to uh, had the party training like around three years old or boys even later than girls, four year old. Can you imagine if Chinese babies all wear diapers, China gonna have uh, become a, a big dumpster uh, country in the whole world. It's much worse um, than the air pollution. Hair and identity, I want to talk about uh, many people interested in my hair work, but they always ask me why hair? So, uh, you know, the more time I stayed here, the, I started questioning myself where I come from, where is my cultural heritage? And uh, that's how the long hair came about. And I also wanted to do something challenging, you know, to do something breakout from my traditional medium or smaller size. And then I look, at, look back my close relationship my, with my twin sister. 
you know, we never uh, been separated until we came to America. And uh, we always went to school, elementary school, daycare, and high school, college, even came to America together, never been separated until I moved to California from my sister's uh, place. And she stayed with my older sister in Atlanta. But we always phone and call each other. This is the picture to show, you know, when we were little, started from elementary school, always have the same hairstyle until we were in high school, college, the hair just grew, grew longer. This picture we showed, we wrapped our hair around the neck like a scarf. So that gave me an idea of, you know, using long hair um, as a reference to show uh, our personal identity, but also as a connection of twin sisters. So I'm also looking at, you know, Chinese culture elements. These are the example of door guards. They came as a pair and always hung in front of the household on the door to protect uh, the family. So these pair of posters always has a imagery of brave soldiers um, wearing, holding a weapons. But from distance, they looks like a similar, right? Like identical. But once you get closer, you'll see error and the weapon all different style, not exactly the same. Like this one is one, one. this one is a, you know, a base. So, and the first feather also uh, is a pair. This is an example of you usually see during the Chinese New Year. They hung them in the front uh, door. Then this inspired me to create my own self portraits of me and my twin sister and with very large scale. Uh, when I showed this at Sacramento State uh, at graduate school um, thesis show, this gallery actually was empty. And my husband kind of helped me to create these two panels and also made this uh, these steps, when you're walking, you're going to another room. This is like a, a entrance of a house. Then you walk into another room, uh, you see another long one, um, even further from wall uh, to the floor. So I also do the highlight and the curve, make sense with the space. Uh, this is created you know, from two-dimensional work on paper, but really uh, gave you a three-dimensional effect. The viewers feel like they can walk into the uh, work itself. So sometimes you know, the twins feel like separate individuals. Sometimes we feel like um, one unit at the bottom here. I also tried a different composition. You know, when the hair blow together, it's like the connection between, you can call twins or can be two people. You have this uh, separation anxiety, but also you wanted to be connected at some point. Then after I finished my first year for graduate school uh, at UC Davis, I was uh, uh, very fortunate to get selected to do a residency, summer residency in Skowhegan, Maine. Then I got a chance to work with a, a fresco master from Italy. Everybody had the opportunity to work on uh, like a 20 by 30 size of uh, testing piece with fresco medium on. Um, Plaster. Some then uh, very few st students uh, like me uh, wanted to work with large scale. So I was very happy that I chose to work on this scale within twenty four hours to get completed. Um, compared to the large scale charcoal on paper, that usually took me 
a month to do it. But this one, you have to do everything before the surface dried off. So I was very pleased with the results. You can see from the picture that's during the evening. This is during the day when the uh, light sun came out. It was a uh, nonstop uh, laboring intense process, but I was very, I feel very rewarded at the end. I was there, I also wanted to do something uh, different, more challenging work. And uh, this is my first outdoor installation work that I collect all the branches is from, um, you know, from on the campus. My studio is up on the hill and our cottage is down near the lake. So I walk back and forth several times a day. Then I saw the falling branches in the forest. And I also went to the dumpster trip, collect this um, old school children's desk. It has been sitting in my studio for a while, like for a week, I couldn't know what to do with it. And then, all of a sudden, one day I walk by the, the forest, I saw the falling branches and gave me an idea to connect these two together. So this time it's not about the hair, but many years in faculty, when they saw this piece, feel like, looks like a dragon, but the process is very similar to the charcoal drawing I made, you know, like uh, I build it up, from longer and thicker branches and move further to the end with a shorter and uh, thinner ones. It's almost like how I build the surface of charcoal uh, marks through many layers of uh, um, mark making. When I came back to finish my last year of MFA program at UC Davis, this is the longest hair drawing I did uh, it's, uh, it's not about my personal connection. It's using a long braid to represent a woman's life in general from, you know, healthy stage of your life. You have, uh, you know, black and shiny hair. Till you reach the middle life, your hair condition change. You know, your hair become thinner and uh, started losing and to reach later life, hair color change to gray or eventually become white. So this just tells you a journey of life through a women's hair or long braid. This piece right now is at uh, White Rabbit uh, Gallery in Sydney, Australia. It's in their permanent collection. And I wanted to really, you know, do a, a, a portrait of me and my twin sister and my older sister. Since my older sister invited me and my twin sister came to the US. So she's like the supportive role in the middle and me and my twin sister on each side. One is left-handed, one is right-handed. So it, it can also be viewed as a one person from three different angles, right? Here is an example of how my idea came from. From Eastern and Western, you know, cultural elements. The middle is um, see a lot of political rankings share the same kind of composition. The high leaders in the middle and uh, military and intellectual advisors on both sides. Then this is a Chinese this, um, culture, same. Uh, the powerful leader in the middle, and then you have a servant side. This is a Renaissance period of triptych work. So I have seen both Eastern and Western uh, visual elements and cultural references here. And uh, after uh, my daughter was born, she also liked to keep her hair grow longer. And when she watched me to do my long hair pieces, she always asked, mom, when you're gonna include me? So this piece is a dedication to my daughter. It's called the bond. It's a between natural connection uh, between mother and the child. 
a, a daughter and mother relationship. So you can see the bottom tail um, back together and the head kind of in closer, like a, a mother and daughter having a conversation. And I want to try the same size, large size with the uh, fine style ink painting. You, you know, you see a lot of fine style ink painting in smaller size, but rarely I have seen Chinese artists has taken on this large size scrolls in ink medium. So I did this uh, called the 60s. The title is a typical hairstyle for women for my mother generation of Chinese women during Cultural Revolution. So this pair of ink paintings uh, acquired by the Harvard Museum in 2021. And when they show this piece for there, the curator sent me the picture of a, a small, um, a young audience visitors made a connection in front of my work. Then I, I switched to ink medium uh, on rice paper, uh, dealing with hair with nature uh, elements called uh, moon series. It's like using magnifying glass to see hair, but it can also be like seeing from distance in the evening, you know, up uh, in the sky to see the variation of change of moon that deals with time. Here's an example of closer up view of looking at hair with different style, different color. Hair, uh, body hair, you know. Sometimes when you look at hair that close using magnifying, magnifying glass, it become like something else. It's almost like a tree trunk with branches. This is like a, a field of, uh, a field of a field, stand up hair. You know, all my works, uh, the inspiration came from my immediate living environment. These body of work, uh, hair objects, really, I wanted to show the different aspect of losing, looking at hair. You know, the previous long hair pieces can be beautiful, but when you look at hair, inside the food at, or at certain settings, it can be unattractive. But this series has a lot of humor and the surrealistic elements. Uh, you can see sometimes the title also play the double meaning or uh, humor to it. The one on the right, uh, right now at the Spencer Museum collection. And on March 4th, the Spencer Museum have an open house party to show the audience uh, visitors the new renovation called the Level Up. So they are gonna have this piece on display. And I will be there to, to lead a, a talk or a short explanation of the work. So I started out with a pencil a graphite study uh, with combined hair with everyday object to show the humorous or also evoke different feelings through hair. And I translate them into oil painting. And a uh, fine style Chinese ink medium. And then I continue, this is like an ongoing uh, series. When, whenever I had the inspiration, I will combine uh, hair or without the hair, like one on the right. This is an inspiration during the lockdown um, life uh, during the pandemic. This is a Rapunzel's hair. This, is, um, this one doesn't have hair, but it shows the US essential items during the uh, lockdown hair, shredded hair, like shredding the identity. This is a uh, hair with a toilet paper to show the essential item during the pandemic. So there's a lot of humorous and uh, surrealistic quality in this body of work. Then I want to show you 
the hair continue to evolve and changing and develop from personal identity to more like hair with uh, nature inspired work. This is my Kansas inspiration. You know, after I moved here from California, I was very intrigued by the iconic um, tornado. I wanted to make something that has more dynamic um, movement rather than static hair like previous work. Combine my identity of hair with my living environment. This piece is at the a Spencer Museum collection too. Uh, just try to show the composition different from uh, vertical to horizontal and also has appreciation of Kansas uh, landscape or Kansas nature uh, that provide the beauty. This is a smaller size of ink on rice paper. This is a Flynn Hill, I call the Flynn Hair. So if you see each line is, is considered as a hair stream. And this almost like at the top of the hair when you open it up. This is almost like a lay down body of male and female like a body hair, this looks like a light on legs body and the pinkish sense like a female body. And this is like a male body. Two layer, over layering them together shows the perspective from foreground to uh, background. And I wanted to uh, show a tornado room installation uh, during the open space. Uh, 2018 at my gallery at Hall Contemporary. So I created 10 panels with acrylic paint and joined them together like a semi-circle uh, screen. And uh, yeah, looks like you are inside a tornado. And the gallery owner, Bill's daughter, Lily, came to visit with a uh, talk, almost like a total um, and Dorothy inside the <laughs> tornado room. And I also try to work with, you know, mixed media, charcoal drawing with uh, Kansas hay bale uh, to show the open space of Kansas landscape, the horizon. When the prairie blow by the wind, almost like an ocean or sea. So this is like a, a current of wave uh, of, uh, Kansas Prairie. At the end, I used uh, Kansas straw bills to create this rural effects, but also has to do with like a Chinese serves, like a Chinese squirrels. This is the picture of me working in my home. And when I finished the uh, horizontal drawing, then the art center whole team helped me to put together in the gallery and add the straws uh, bills at the, uh, at the two ends. So it's quite challenging work. You cannot sometimes, I can visualize something in my studio, but when you put the work in the actual space, sometimes can be um, challenging because you don't know 100% sure what it's gonna look like, but I'm quite happy with the, the, the outcome. And this piece, this solo show uh, was on display at the Lawrence Art Center in 2012. I was the featured artist uh, that year. We walk into the smaller uh, gallery in, in, in Lawrence uh, Art Center, you'll see another uh, installation called Hayware. So I want to show the rural and urban aspect of life that I have been lived. One in Kansas has an open space, the other is in China. When you go to China, um, every time I go there, I see the changes, especially rapid change in the, in the big city. You see the telephone wires and high rising uh, buildings. Sometimes the infrastructure just couldn't catch up. This wanted to show the welcoming of aspect of urban landscape in China and translate that from outdoor street scene into a gallery space. Here I want to show you the two, two works that now currently at the New Kansas City Airport is still uh, inspired by the Kansas 
uh, landscape and nature. I want the visitors when they arrive in Kansas or they leave Kansas, they still have this lasting impression of beautiful scenery in, 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 in Kansas. And it also gave you a sense of, you know, um, myself as a Chinese immigrants live in Kansas. So you see, can be hair, but can be also considered as a tall grass. This is me. Uh, in 2021, I was awarded a studio space, huge, 2,000 square feet uh, at Crossroad in downtown uh, Kansas City. I was able to use that space to create these two uh, large pieces for the new Kansas City Airport. Uh, I also um, moved from hair to combine hair with water because I see the similarities between them. Sometimes you have a smooth, right moment like a smooth hair. Sometimes you have up and down um, dangerous life experience like a tangled hair. So this is to show you the process of how the charcoal, uh, large charcoal drawing worked from beginning to end. It's very similar from the training um, that I had back in China in fine style ink painting. That's why I kept the background very clean. Then 2019, I had the opportunity to work with the uh, um, Alcantara company, textile company in Milan, uh, Italy. First time working with ink on, on, on fabric and working with an Italian uh, curator. These are the example of eight pieces I did of waterfall, front and back. This is the uh, location where the show uh, took place at uh, uh, Milan Royal Palace, right next to the big cathedral. This is the room uh, I had. There were six uh, invited Chinese artists in the show. Each one has to work with the Alcantara material, with ink, and, and each one got the individual room. So my room is just this is bedroom. So when I first, they flew me out to visit the site, I saw the, the light, natural lighting came from the two vertical window, hit the floor, just like a um, waterfall or like a long hair. That gave me inspiration, came back to finish eight large pieces for uh, a front image of waterfall in different view. In the back, a calligraphy, based on a famous poem uh, written by Li Bai, a famous Tang Dynasty poet. And the content of the poem uh, has to do with the front image. It's about how you view the waterfall from different angles. Here the example of me sitting on top of the fabric. You see the fabrics provides you a lot of uh, flexibility working with uh, this material. This is me working in a studio, uh, Seedco studio. I rented a space uh, for six months to finish this large piece. So I also rented the uh, scaffolding. You can see me up and down almost like a monkey. During the pandemic, I continue using long hair to express my concern and desire for equity and cultural diversity. Because during the pandemic, there are several you know, critical events had happened. I wanted to use hair to express my desire or concern for these. So I was very lucky and fortunate to get to know the new curator and director at the Nerman Museum, she came to visit my studio during the pandemic and saw this body of work. And then I got a chance to show at the Kansas uh, Focus Gallery at the Nerman Museum uh, early that year. Uh, I continue using uh, Chinese ink on Italian fabric. So this is called the reset, reset. This one called uh, 
pandemic hairdo. You know, during the lockdown, many people let their hair go longer, serve as a mask or scarf. Since the reset, talking about once you have something like crisis like this, you change your routine, you have to reset to find a balance in your life. This is almost like a Buddha doing meditation and the black and white color to, to show, to suggest the time difference during the day and night, but also give you a sense of like yin and yang, how to balance yourself. This is called a safe kiss. You know, during the pandemic, many people has to keep social distancing, but there's a stronger need for inner connection between lovers and family members. Then this is my support uh, for Black Lives Matters movement. I use this uh, iconic, you know, fist to show not only have the hairstyle, but also came from the, the my childhood memory in China. There's, I have seen a lot of, you know, propaganda revolutionary posters. Now I, I want to show the, the different medium. This is a charcoal on paper. This is also charcoal on paper. Then um, try the different um, a position in like a body language to show uh, whether they're happy or depressed or feel lonely during the pandemic. This is a group of women uh, covered with hair. It's dedicated to what happened in the Middle East, you know, like an ironic um, movement of free women's rights. This has also happened in China, or uh, some rural women uh, were kidnapped and uh, human trafficking uh, still happened in China. There's a lot of women being locked down, treated like animals. So this is a chain and uh, barbwares to show how painful uh, experience for women still happening in the world. Here's a connection between the two uh, females. Um, can be sisters, like side view of the indication of nose covered. They are facing together, carry on a conversation at the end, connect together like a willow tree, I call the willow. This is during the pandemic uh, lockdown, you have to keep distance, but actually the roots, roots like love a uh, connection to hold them together. And from that uh, inspiration, I continue to further develop a new piece for the Nelson uh, Atkins Museum. You can see on view now, uh, it runs to the end of August this summer. So it has to do with a family tree, but also showed the roots represents where I came from, my cultural heritage and the family that I created in America. The child is up, uh, up um, in the sky. So once you have a strong roots, no matter where you go, you always have a, um, a healthy branches grow. So even though this idea came from my personal connection, uh, but it also can um, represent everybody in general. You know, in America, we all came from different country or a different part of the, the, the country and move around. Then wh wherever you go, you made a new connection at home. This is my new piece just finished today called the Gun Control. Uh, it's Took me a long time to get all the details right. It's a mix of, you know, birth control kit with um, bullets, if you see it. So I see the birth control provide freedom and choice for, for women, but the gun control can also save many people's lives. I want to talk about, you know, the next two shows. Uh, Coming up this fall uh, in China, Shenzhen at the Sea World Culture and Art Center. It's about hair and human hair in art and fashion. So there's an, about 20 uh, internationally well-known artists uh, that uh, dealing with hair gonna be invited for the show. You can see this is 
last year's show of the Italian artists work there. So it's quite amazing, exciting opportunity and the space. This is the show uh, in spring 2025. I was also invited as a part of it called the Bald Women, curated by Susan. So it's gonna be center court and 20 feet high and 15 feet in uh, diameter. So I'm not going to tell the details. It's gonna be new piece, uh, installation piece. That's my last slice. We can do it. <laughs> Thank you. So you can see more work through my website. I also have an artist file at the Spencer Reference Library in um, at Nelson Atkins Museum. They just um, put together my artist file. So if you want to do research on me or wanted to know about me, so you can visit, uh, stop by at the uh, Spencer La Research Library. Thank you. Thank you, Hong for that wonderful talk filled with so many different series that you've done over the years. Uh, and I'm sure there will be questions from the audience that we can um, ask you to continue the, the, the program. And I think that it's- I have to post um, share button, where is it? Um. Hong, you can. Uh, oh, sorry. You see me? Your uh, your video is breaking up a little. Okay, that's better. Well, you have some of your work on the wall behind you if we want to see some of your work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. So the share screen, I closed it, right? Yes. yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Hong, for your wonderful presentation. Um, really, we learned a lot about your early experiments with um, sort of fine style versus freestyle, mm -hmm. and also about sort of how you're inspired by not only your own cultural heritage, but sort of ways in which you adopt, adapt um, this with sort of places that you've lived in and also with a lot of these dynamic references that you uh, <laughs> mentioned. I, I really enjoyed that and, and so did our audience as well. Um, I'm myself sort of inspired by your journey and how you transform like sim such simple motifs like hair um, or even tornadoes or water into mm -hmm. sort of these monumental works of um, fine art. Um, and like David said, that we're super excited to encounter your art um, at the Kansas City Airport as well, um, which I think itself is a space of connectivity. It's, it's a space of exchange and travel itself. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, it's a fitting location um, for your transcultural art. Um, I have many questions, but I think we have many from the audience as well. So I'll start with the first one, mm -hmm. which is from Logan, um, who asks, was there a particular reason why you switched to oil painting for the Two Cultures series? Mm -hmm. uh, I think when I, you know, first show the traditional ink medium uh, in my graduate school, uh, you know, feel like my peers, my classmates, and my some of my professors, they really didn't know how to commenting on my work, especially mm -hmm. during the critique. They feel like if I can create something, the medium they familiar with, they can help me. <laughs> so they said, Hong, can you do other medium? I said, yes, I can do all your painting. And I think from that, really help me, not just how me, how both of, from both sides have more closer conversation than I'm just showing a traditional Chinese ink medium. I think the ink medium kind of sometimes created a wall barrier for further communication. 
I think mm -hmm. switching to oil medium, also the charcoal for my classmates and Western audience, they feel like they can really inviting them in, not just the realistic style, you know, over the time, my theme, even though started out with the hair, but see the theme constantly grow, but the bottom line of the style, no matter in ink medium or oil painting medium, still a uh, representational and realistic. Yeah, that's a good question. Thank you so and much. And after I did that oil painting, uh, for a while, I feel like I didn't feel rewarded. <laughs> I, I still went back to charcoal and, and ink, but I, I, I can do both. <laughs> yeah. Um, a question that sort of follows up on, on the, this question of materials and sort of materiality as well, mm -hmm. um, and it also comes from Logan, is about sort of depicting hair mm -hmm. in certain media. Do you think it's easier to depict the hair in certain uh, mediums and materials over others, for mm -hmm. instance, between ink or charcoal, paint, etc. Yeah, uh, that's a very good question. You know, um, first, if you want to choose the medium, for me, you have to have the opportunity to explore more mediums, to know mm -hmm. each medium's limitation and their uniqueness. Then you can. Um, carefully choose which media serves your idea the best, which is more uh, 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 appropriate for, for your uh, idea. For example, for the very large hair drawings, I think the charcoal on paper can really achieve this dynamic black and white um, contrast rather than ink, because mm -hmm. ink on rice paper, it, you have to keep the medium's translucency. Mm -hmm. That's why you couldn't create a very dark, dark tone because you want to keep the, the, the water-based mediums, uh, their uniqueness there. And usually the ink medium give you a softer tone rather than mm -hmm. heavy visual gravity. So the visual gravity really goes well with the large scale, scale of charcoal. Yeah. on paper but the ink is kind of elegant softer mm -hmm. tone something like if i deal with smaller size of closer up view of uh, uh, uh imagery or composition i think the ink um on paper works very well because a lot of traditional chinese ink paintings tend to present it in a darker room, especially the traditional ones without, you know, uh, light, without a light bulb. You see them almost like you unroll the scroll, you get closer to view it. Mm -hmm. That required very intimate viewing process. So with that experience in mind, the small ink medium on paper mm -hmm. works very well to serve my purpose. Mm -hmm. And uh, just recently, after I working with the uh, Italian fabric company, I feel like I found um, a solution of working with ink mm -hmm. on large scale, still have a, a similar effect like a charcoal on large paper without getting smudged like charcoal on paper, but with ink on fabric, it, you know, uh, solve the problem, but still have a same similar dynamic effect. I'm quite happy that I found a, a replacement. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Chong. And, and thank you for talking about the Italian fabric as well, because that was something I almost wanted to ask you about. So mm -hmm. I'm glad that you were able to talk about it. Uh -huh. um, our next question comes from Catherine White, mm -hmm. um, who asks, what is it like collaborating with galleries to display your larger artworks or artworks that extend onto the ground? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. um, usually I like to do a site specific uh, work, especially large ones. If the gallery directors or curator invited me to have a show there, I, I, I first 
had a conversation with them is to see the space myself mm -hmm. first. Then I would know better which work goes well on the wall and the space. If they ask me to create a new one, usually I will go to fill the space first. Then it gives me an idea what kinds of work um, I wanted to create. So the work, my work has to make a sense with the space. I'm not just through what kinds of work I had already made and then show it. That's not my, um, hmm. my way of doing it. Yeah. Right. Then I will start out with a sketch and share my idea with the curator or director and see what I can do, what my limitation is, were there a museum or space requirement? So we work out to, um, to a way that we all agree, then we can move forward. Yeah. And Hong, in your installation in Milan, that happened during the pandemic, right? Yeah. And is it true that you weren't actually able to go and install it yourself, right? No, I only made the work in Lawrence and they pay the round trip shipment of the material and the work uh, send it over. So they had the installation team to put together, but I did uh, 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 made a small layout sketch, send it to them and said, this is what I wanted to show. So they, they put together. Right. So mm -hmm. truly, yeah, yeah, it's very important for you to provide that kind of guidance. Yeah, even uh, the piece at the, uh, Nelson Atkins right now, well, before the show started, we have been to many Zoom meetings to have the artists meet, meet the installation uh, director and the uh, curators. So I always draw a sketch, uh, told them what I wanted to you know, present, how I wanted my work to be presented. And then they will uh, build a platform for me just based on what I need for that specific work. If I could jump in here, there's a, a I got a text from Sarah Lynn Reese Hardy, mm -hmm, director sure. of the Spencer Museum of Art, who wants to express her thanks to you, Hong, but also has a question. She would like to know how the human scale relates to the hair motif. Mm -hmm. Human scale, um, because a lot of my works are larger than life size. I wanted to you know, use a very, uh, my, my Chinese training background as a very uh, delicate and uh, two-dimensional work that give you a monumental type of effect. You know, the Twin Spirits, my very first hair pieces, not only hang on the front entrance of the panels, but it can also feel like, like a two pair of lion stones, <laughs> stone lions that you see in front of the traditional Chinese household. And mm -hmm. I think the monumental scales also uh, create as a part of elements to give you a three-dimensional effect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Um, we have another uh, question that sort of comes back to um, your sort of the hair motif again. Mm -hmm. And uh, it comes from Zhongguan, who is uh, curious about the impact of your network or, or relationships with individuals or people whose hairs are different in texture or colors. Yeah. Uh, and then what kind of impact that has on your work and if that has, if, if they've altered your perspective in any way. Yeah. Um, I think after I showed my hair related work, I have uh, received many positive and uh, uh, response from my audience visitors, you know. If they don't understand my Chinese cultural heritage or my personal connection, they still feel like they can appreciate my work in different level. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's kind of my purpose of creating work. I wanted to using my hair as a way of connecting with my audience. Uh, they feel like they can feel uh, accessible to my work because hair is such a universal theme. They feel like they can relate to it um, from their own cultural backgrounds. And uh, really the process of my making is even though it's time consuming, my mm -hmm. uh, ultimate goal is to 
use time consuming process to make something that is timeless. Do you know what I mean? It's like everybody can relate it to my work. No, what, no matter what, regardless their background or cultural uh, heritage. Right. Yeah. Thank you so much. And uh, it, it really sort of ties in with one of my questions as well, mm -hmm. which I was thinking about sort of the reception of your work, mm -hmm. you know, in different, in different locations in like sort of internationally in China, of course, and in the Midwest as well. And, and I feel like that kind of answers a little bit um, of that as well. Um, if I may jump in and also mm -hmm. ask a question, I, yeah. I was very curious about the environmental studies the outdoor sort of um, uh -huh. installation because it's so um, I don't want to say out of place from mm -hmm. your 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 sort of uh, work, but it is something that I was not expecting to see. Oh. Um, and do you do you find that you might explore either sculpture or sort of uh, like installation? I mean, you do have an element of installation in your mm -hmm. um, in your hanging scrolls as well, but yeah. I'm wondering if outdoor sculptures or some kind of installation is um, in your future? Yes, actually I'm uh, <laughs> writing a proposal, a grant that I'm, uh, I'm going to apply is a site specific outdoor installation. And also the one for the Spencer Museum uh, in Susan's uh, curated show is gonna be a three dimensional sculpture piece. So. Okay. I'm always push myself further to it, to explore something, you know, challenging and uh, original. Uh, even though my my work's dealing with the hair, but it's not really about hair. It's something that beyond hair. So my hair evolved from my personal connection to a broader um, themes. So yes, I think that's the richness and the, the layering of my work conceptually or also visually. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have one more question actually from Logan, uh, who asks, mm -hmm. in your artworks that depict you and your sisters, do you have an affinity for one of the figures as specifically representative of yourself versus your twin sister? How do you tell the difference? <laughs> <laughs> you know, actually, before I came to America, I did the self portraits of me and my twin sister have mm -hmm. all the facial like, details and uh, for people. And then I showed at uh, CAFA, uh, Central Academy of Fine Arts, for my classmates and my professor who knows us, uh, they know uh, is about the twins. But for general audience who don't know us, they they, they were wondering, confused, why this artist paint the same image or same face twice. Mm -hmm. Then yeah. from that experience, it's kind of give me a thought, you know, what if I create a self portrait again to show my audience without knowing our background, without mm -hmm. knowing I'm a twin, can they still feel like there's a double images, there's a duality in it? That's kind of helped me to create this, my long hair, first long hair self-portraits. But for myself, self-portrait, I, I haven't done a self-portrait myself. I, I always do a, a self-portrait of me and my twin sister, or with my siblings, or with my daughter. I think mm -hmm. this will go back to the question of, or the title of my talk, duality. I think the duality kind of, came from natural connection personally. Um, maybe it has to do with me being a twin. I always see the comparison or the similarity between the two. Even the conversation I chose is like either triptych or diptych or the right. contrasting relationship between quietness, stillness and the movement and mm -hmm. East and West. And uh, yeah, I think that's all part of me and uh, also came from my life experience, both in China and, and US. I rarely do a, a single, I think I did a single piece of more like hair and object series. That's a single piece, right? Still life. Mm -hmm. But I haven't really done a self portrait for myself yet. Mm -hmm. Only with my, always with my twin sister or my sister or family portraits. 
Wong, um, maybe as a, as a final question, unless mm -hmm. others come in, um, something that you and I have talked about several times, but I think you, I would like you to share with this audience, please, is uh, your thoughts about being an artist operating in Lawrence, Kansas, but showing <laughs> nationally and internationally. My thoughts? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, what, what, what do you gain by operating in Lawrence, Kansas versus somewhere else? I think, I think uh, the bottom line is, is really no matter where you go, you have really to be grounded and keep focusing on what are you doing. You don't have to worry about what's going on around you, the outside world. I think the, the Lawrence Kansas really provide me with uh, this concentrating and uh, the quietness to mm -hmm. help me to you know, really a uh, 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 deep further to investigate uh, in my work. And with the, all the network, you know, happening around the world, even the Zoom provide, you know, there may be only the, maybe the different time zone, but the bottom line, we can all connect it. So it's like my mentor from UC Davis, when Thibault, Professor Thibault once said, you know, no matter where you go, the, you have to make a good body of work and the, the gallery owner or the, the museum director will find you. It's not the other way around. You don't have to spend your time, go out or even go to the big city like, like New York. I couldn't imagine my peers after they graduated from MFA program, they immediately moved to New York. They have to spend like 20, 30 years just try to, to find something to make a living, didn't even have a time to make a work. I think I'm just being lucky, you know, ended up in <laughs> Midwest and this nice uh, supportive community to create it, uh, uh, opportunity for me to, you know, I think, uh, I'm lucky because early on, I find a, a, a good a supportive life partner, my husband and my, my, my daughter. I wouldn't imagine if I have a second child, just one child is a, is a balance for me to find the time with my family and my studio practice. And uh, I'm fortunate with a supportive community, art community here and also my family, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chong, and thank you so much, David. Too. We, I don't think we have um, any further questions at this point. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much, Chong, for thank you. Yeah. Your presentation. But we again want to thank you, Hong, for um, your your uh, very uh, um, rich and engaging uh, talk this evening, and for your generosity in answering our questions. And I know I speak for all of us in saying we can't wait to go to the, the Kansas City International Airport and see those drawings in person and look forward to the other new work that you're creating uh, that we'll see in the future. And again, if you haven't been yet to the Nelson Atkins, uh, please see Hong's work in the show there. So thank you to our audience and we'll wish everyone a good evening. <laughs>